I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us worship in the house of the Lord together. To behold his beauty, to witness his glory in this place. The house he has built for us. A place of his power. A place of his presence. A place where we can let go of our fears and take hold of faith. A place where we can gather together as one, hearts united in praise and worship for Jesus and for all the wondrous things he has done. No calamity, no sickness, no death can bring us down. For we are standing on solid rock. We are standing on Jesus. We have brought his word and his power into our homes and into our families. But we are not meant to be separated and isolated for long. For it is not alone, but together with his family, with his church, that we will arise. Now is the time to celebrate our victory, to celebrate his name together in this house. For this is our house of worship. This is our house of miracles. who's joining us online. So let's greet them, Joey. Yes, thank you so much for joining us to our online community. So we have Lilibet Otanis. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. We have also Vanessa Rosero. Thank you for joining us. And why don't you tag somebody who you know has to yeah. be here this morning yep. in church. Share the link to your friends and family. We're not only on Facebook, we're also on YouTube, and we're also on Church Online. So go ahead and share the link with your friends and family. Yeah, that's awesome, Kat. Yeah. And we would like to encourage you, everyone to please engage in our comment section. Or send your emojis, happy emojis, love emojis, whatever emojis is that. <laughs> okay, so and also share this link so that we can reach more people so that they can join us in our service today. Like That's it. right. And if you happen to be new here, you just clicked on, we will be showing you a QR code right here on your screen. You can scan that so you can get to know us better there. Oh, so, right. So it's so happy. We're so glad to announce that 
for our church update for today. And we are so happy to inform you everyone that we are going to have the first ever wow. Family Summit. That's All amazing. Right. So this will be happening on September 2 from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And on September 3, so we have uh, sa that Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and hosted by the Next Steps Department. And who are our speakers? So you don't want to miss this one. Again, that's happening on September 2nd and September 3rd. That's gonna be free. Yeah. And everybody is welcome to join us. We'll be having Pastors Paul and Shadi. Of course, Pastors Giselle and Mylene will also be here. Pastor Joey and Sister Od Rafael and the head of Next Steps, Pastor Gam and Sister Baby Lehako will all be speaking about family, parenting, marriage. So we would love to have have you with us right there. That's so awesome, Cats. And of course, the theme for that summit is bringing heaven to our home. Another That's amazing. Update? Yes. You know what? In church, we cater to different generations. So right now, we want to introduce you to Wonder League and Yay! Generation Uprising. And we have and the team right here. We have Pastor Rean Faraon. He is the department head, the ministry head of Wonder League and Gen Up. And I know you have your volunteers with you today, Pastor. Let us know your service times as well. Yes, yes. Uh, Generation Uprising and Wonder League happen simultaneously with all our services here every Sunday. Uh, Generation Uprising specifically for 10 to 12 years old. In fact, I have one of the kuyas. Uh, volunteers of our Generation Uprising. So, Kuya TJ, Kuya Caleb, come say Woo! hi to the camera. Hi, everybody. So, we invite <laughs> hey, everybody. you. And if you have anybody who is uh, ages 10 to 12, then join us. Also, from Wonder League, we have some of the guys here. His na their names Woo! are Bam Bam and also Captain Prayer. So, catch them, all right? Catch them in our services. Thank you. <laughs> See you, kids. Don't forget, bring your Bibles in church. <laughs> yes. And Sir Joey, you know what? Pastor Giselle is going to be bringing the Word. I'm so excited. Yeah, me too. I'm so excited. You know, guys, you are also excited for today. So we are, you know, having later on. So Pastor Giselle will be preaching. So you guys take the notes. So That's take right. time to ponder. Take time to receive the word. Right, Katz? Uh, and we're going to come into one of my most favorite parts of the service. I'm excited for worship yes. as always. And so we'll see you in we'll service. You God bless. Good morning, church. Let's all stand up right now this morning. Give praise to our Almighty Father. Hey! Let praise be a weapon that conquers 
Say hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So good morning, everyone. My name is Marco. This one is what's your name? Sandro. Sandro. So say welcome to church. Welcome to church. Yes. All right. Good job, San. Um, now I'm in, I'm distracted by his cuteness. <laughs> huh? So what? San, oh, the joke lang. Go with mommy first. So yeah, welcome to church. Um. He doesn't want to go to kids' church. I don't know why, but I guess he wanted to host. Welcome back to our lead pastors, Pastor Joselle and Mylene. It's so good to see you po again. Um, if you could greet the person beside you, um, say good morning and say welcome to church. You know, there's different kinds of greetings, de ba? Like kanina, I was in church. I mean, in the lobby. I would greet people differently. You know, some people you greet them like this. And then some you just say, hey, good morning, good morning. So for the one you're not so close to, why don't you turn to that person and say, let me buy you some coffee. Go, go, go. So the person that you didn't hug and greet, you look at the other person and say, hey, would you like a cup of coffee? So I'm going to use my Australian accent today because I was supposed to go to Australia, but it didn't happen, guys. <laughs> so... How, how is your morning routine? You know how on Sundays you have morning routines? How many of you have morning routines? Sunday morning routines and like your specific spot in the sanctuary? Like Tita Kat over here always sits there and see Tito Juni is always there. And you have these routines on Sunday, right? Sometimes you wake up, read your Bible, get some coffee, walk the dog or whatever your routine may be, right? How many of you can relate? And sometimes when your routine 
you know, doesn't fall the same way as it used to. Parang you get so, um, I don't know, how do you say it? Ngarag. <laughs> or like when your, your, your flow doesn't flow the same way, it gets so, ah, disoriented. Thank you, Po. Um, the reason why I was saying, I'll just tell you a quick story, okay? So why I was speaking in Australian, because we were supposed to be in Australia July, right? And so we all, we were a group of people who applied for visas. And syempre, all of us, yeah, let's go, let's get our visas. And we were so excited. Like everyone was like, yes, we're going to Australia, good time, right? We're gonna get some fish and chips. Um, and then so we all applied different times, different weeks, different days. So after everyone paid their visa fees, after everyone, um, you know, everyone was expecting to get their visas, right? So after that, some people started getting their visas. So first couple, oi, we got our visa na three days in. Yay! In my heart, bakit ako wala pong visa? And then the next week, another guy got his visa. Yes, I got my visa. And kami, shucks, ako makawala pa rin. And then the next one, we got our visa. Yay! Good for you. I'm so happy for you. But deep down inside, Lord, nasa na yung visa ko. And sometimes, that's how we operate. You know, that's why I was asking about routines. Is sometimes, when we ask for a miracle from God, we base it on what happened before. We base it on others, other people's routines or what happened to them before. And sometimes, you feel na parang, God, how come you did it for them and how come ako? Nandito pa rin ako. So that's why I'm speaking in Australian. So I'm just practicing so when I go. But the main story is, we didn't get our visa. And sometimes, you get discouraged, but sometimes it's just not your time yet. And God is not done working. So with our prayer requests, we have some with their visas and some without their visas. <laughs> so that's just like a quick reminder that sometimes it doesn't happen on our time, right? And the ones with visa are thankful for God's provision. Amen. Thank you for your visas. I got an unex and she got an unexpected bonus. Huh? And thankful for the early release of my store disorder visa. Yes! How come ako wala pa rin? Joke lang. Thank you, Jesus, for her visa. But I believe, you know, that, you know, we don't have our visa yet, but I guess we're gonna get it soon. So for the ones without visa, we will pray. God, we thank you for the one who has leukemia and for the preterm baby in the NICU, believing for breakthrough, breakthrough in my life and in my business. And, you know, in our lives, sometimes, kasi, we're so stuck with routines, right? And we believe based on what happened to other people. And we, sometimes we forget that God doesn't move the same way every time, right? So some, sometimes it happened this way. And just like in the miracles in the Bible, some God, instant healing, touch of the garment, healed. But some, He had to wipe mud on the eyes. And sometimes we have to get rid of that mindset that if God, you did it for them like this, then you will do it for me like this. So... When you're believing, just know that God is working behind the scenes and it's not all the same. And it's okay because we know that God will come through for us, right? Amen. So God, we thank you. We thank you for the ones who are believing, God. We thank you for the ones that are struggling. We thank you, God, that you are working behind the scenes, God. And we thank you that you will never let us down. We thank you that you will just show yourself strong and that you will, it will happen in, in the right time, God. So we thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. We're gonna go into this song right now, Romans 8, 28. This goes exactly into what Marco was talking about, like just waiting when you're in the waiting, when you're in the waiting. And, and I love how he said, you know, if he worked this way before, it doesn't mean he's gonna work the same way again. But he's working. But he's working. But he's on the move. Your miracle is on the way. Amen? Romans 8, 28. And we know, come on, do you know? Say, I know, I know, I know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. God, we know that You are moving in our lives, God. God, we're going to worship You with all our hearts today. This heavy load was never mine to bear so i cast my cares upon you lord this weary road i've traveled for so long would you take my hand and lead me on you are working all things for my good you are working all I cannot see it, God, 
I still believe you are working all things for my good. When troubles come and nights are filled with tears, I will fix my of God, would you sing this out today? If you trust in the goodness of God, would you lift your hands and lift your voice? If you trust in the character and nature of God, you know that He will never let you down. And He will never forsake you. He's never left your side. He's been with you all along. In every season, in every moment, He was right there with you. Come on, let faith rise in your heart this morning.
On one more time, declare it. And we, Savior, come on, speak to your mountains, speak to your problems, and say, My God is mighty to save. My God is forever mighty, author of salvation. in your own way why not speak to your mountain whatever problems you're facing today speak God to your mountain come on speak God what I mean is speak if you are facing sickness speak healing to 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 that sickness right now to your body right now speak provision to your lack 
Come on, speak God to your problems. Come on, declare restoration to your relationships. Come on, move right now. Speak, open up your mouth and begin to declare. Begin to declare who God is, what He has done, and who you are in Him. Begin to declare because our God is mighty. Amen? He is working for our good because He loves us. And as we pray, we know that He is working. He is moving. He, he's not done with you yet. He's not finished with you yet. He has a plan. He has a wonderful destiny. And He's allowing us to grow closer to Him so that in the process we see Him more and more. Looking our eyes to Jesus. Focusing our eyes on Him and Him alone. He is your answer, right? He is your provider. He is your healer. He is your restoration. He is your destiny. He is your purpose. He is your song in the night. He is your shout. He is your everything. Come on, just declare it right now. Open up your heart. Open up your mouth. Thank you, Lord. We say, Savior, He can move. of the word right even though we don't see it you know some people they're going to think you guys are crazy why are you just rejoicing you don't even see it yet but we have the word 
Amen. And the Holy Spirit now, God gives us a measure of faith. And when faith, you know, gets attached to that word, that word that God has given to your heart, consider it done. It's, it's done. Amen. It's done. That's why we rejoice. That's why we shout. That's why we just, right, even though I don't see it yet, even though the visa is not yet there, come on, we rejoice. <laughs> Come on, everybody, let's rejoice whatever you're facing. Come on, Yay! declare it. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord God. You know what? This, this song, I asked Pastor Nash because we were in a journey, journey of believing, journey of really praying for, for a lot of things for, this, uh, for the trip that we did, you know, visa included. And we were standing and God just, uh, I don't know, God, God speaks in many ways, right? And so as we were, I don't know, I just found out this song. I, God just dropped it in, in, you know, in the playlist. And then I said, Nash, when we come back, I want to sing that song because it is truly like an anthem in our hearts that even though we don't see it, God is always working. Amen. And that is true for me. That is true for my family. That is true also for your family. Amen. Come on, let's just give praise to God one more time. Consider it done. Whatever you are believing for, consider it done. All right. Oh my goodness. As Pastor Giselle was uh, just exhorting, Hebrews 11, 1. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is why we can't believe, because our faith is the substance of things that we hope for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Why don't, you don't see it yet, why do we rejoice? Because we have faith. Faith in God, faith in His Word. And I love what it says in verse two. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. You are going to have your good testimony. You are going to have your good testimony. The fact that you are even standing strong believing, even if you don't see it, is already a good testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father, that we have this faith. Yeah. Faith that can move mountains. Hey. Faith that we can speak to our situations because we have faith in a perfect God, in a loving God, in a faithful God. We have faith in His Word and His Word alone. And so that's why we can stand. And yes and amen, because of that, all things, all things work together for our good. And we will obtain a good testimony. And we thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name. And all who believe that, rejoice and say, Amen. amen. And amen, and amen. Woo! Amen. Well, we want to welcome everybody. Welcome to church. Turn to your left and to your right. Just tell them, hello. Or in Spanish, hola. Gritzi, Swiss. All right. Gritzi. But before you sit down, I'll, I just want to ask Pastora Belen to come up on we stage. We have Pastora Belen from New Life Medway. Medway, UK. All the way from New Life Medway. So, Pastora Belen, if you could come up here. And uh, recently, we were in uh, their church. Yeah, in we were in Kent. The... Do you know that we have a new life church, our first ever new life church in Europe? Okay? It's in Kent. It's an hour away from London. All right? It's in Medway. And they, together with Pastor Mark, who's coming. Yeah, September all right? 1. They right? are pastoring an amazing church. Yes. All right? A British British, you know, British, British. From so high, high tea to tea low tea. tea. All right. But they uh, have amazing church, wonderful people. We preach. We ordained them a couple yeah. of weeks ago as pastor over New Life in Kent in the UK. And okay. so, in so we want to honor you, Pastora Belen. Uh, last Sunday, we had an ordination of uh, some New Life uh, pastors. You know, that was last Sunday, but you weren't here. Yes, now you're here, but we did ordain them a month ago. My goodness, was that a, almost a month? Yeah, July 16th. 
17. Yes, my daughter's birthday. So we ordained them July 16. So that was a month ago. But we want to honor you, Pastora Belen. So right now, congratulations, Pastora. Yeah, so Pastor, you might want to say something to our new life family. Just want to say thank you, really. What an honor as well to be in the house. And my goodness me. <laughs> I really, really thank you for lending us uh, these beautiful pastors that really rock the place. And we, we really have a wonderful people, so maybe they will watch this some, uh, you know, sometime. We really have a wonderful people in New Life yes. Medway. And same as you, so I bring the greetings from our uh, church in Medway. So God bless you all. Hey. Thank you, Pastora. Thank you, Pastora. Oh, naman. We love you. We love you. So once again, a hand for Pastor Abilan. Congratulations. Pastor Mark, if you're watching, next, next Sunday ka na, okay? All right. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, everybody. Thank you, worship team. Amazing time. So glad that we are able to just worship and be encouraged. Among your encouraged, amen. So glad that we can be encouraged by the word. Amen. Again, if you guys have families or friends in that part of the world, in, uh, in the UK, um, it's in Medway. Medway is like an hour away from London. And uh, who knows, eventually we might have a new life in London. All right? Among you want to be part of that. <laughs> All right, in new life London. But then again... It's in that part, we're in, it's an hour away, and if you have friends there, there are Filipinos there, please, you know, inform us so we can connect them to new life in Medway. Amazing. Are you ready for the word? There's a word that is uh, in, uh, it's in my heart, it's been here for quite some time, and it's a theme. Among you know, it's so important to you that each and every one of us will, must have a theme in our hearts. A theme of, uh, that comes from the Word, a theme that God gives to you, and you meditate on that theme. And so if you need the title for this message, the title is Making History with God. Making History with God. I am here to tell you that each and every one of us in Christ, we have a history. We have a history with God. But God's desire is that we be aware of our history with Him. You know, what is a history? What, what do you call, why, why are we talking about history? Because history with God is your life encounters with God, right? Remember the days where in, you know, in the past where in God just supernaturally healed you, moved in your life, you saw the provision of God. That is your history. Amen. Remember the times where in you didn't know what to do and then you prayed to God and God gave you an instruction. He gave you a word that you stood on. And then after that, it became a reality. Among you remember that? Among you have a testimony. Amen. So when you have a testimony or when you have a history, no one can take that away from you. Right? The devil cannot take that away from you. Okay? So I want us to be aware. The purpose of this message is to be aware and to be excited that we are not yet done. God has a history. We must remember that history, but also we must continue to be aware that He wants to do history in us and through us. And that is why we have this opportunity to build history, to make history with God. Are you with me? All right? It's your learnings, what to do and what not to do based on the experiences that you had with God. Your wisdom that came, the wisdom that came became a truth and a foundation in your life. Remember the people, the instruments that God used, amen, in, in navigating, in helping you, instructing you, and blessing you throughout your history with God. God used people, amen? Amen, and that's why we must be aware of these things. The highs and the lows, your experiences, the breakthroughs, the answers to prayers. Who among you can say, I've seen God move in my life? Can you raise your hands? So this is Testimony Sunday, right? We have seen God. And you know what? You've seen God in the past. Get ready. You're going to see God in the present and you're going to see God in the days to come. Amen. That makes me excited because now I have something that I can build on. Amen. Because of that history. Two things when we are aware of history, history with God, we remember history that makes our hearts grateful. It makes our hearts thankful. It makes our hearts, you know, worship Him. 
because that was an impossible thing. You know what happened there was an impossible thing. Without God, it's that, that's going to be impossible. But God, amen, but God happened. And now I look back and say, look what the Lord has done. Among you can declare that. Look what the Lord has done. He's been good. Look at that. That was like, I cannot see it, but God pulled through. The Word was there. The Word steadied me. The Word gave me uh, focus. The Word gave me encouragement. And look what the Lord has done. I look back right now and see, oh God, what you've done. I give praise to the Lord. Amen. I remember coming home from that uh, wonderful trip. We had a wonderful trip, beautiful, glorious all the adjectives, only Ephesians 3.20 trip. It's two years in the making, you know, this trip with my family. And we went to Europe with, uh, you know, to visit uh, Medway. And also, when we were coming back, I remember, I didn't know that Mylene was also doing it. When we were coming back, landing here, I was worshiping and praising God because of the journey that happened. You know, the journey of believing, the journey of the impossibility becoming possible. His protection, His provision, His, his uh, connection, and all of those things. I was coming back and saying, Lord, look what the Lord has done. Do you know when you remember, it will cause your heart to worship Him. Amen. That's why God wants us to remember. That's the theme of the Bible. He wants us to remember what the Lord has done. And that will cause your heart to be free from anxiety, from fear. It will cause your heart even to be free from depression. Because you remember your history with God. Come on. Anyone have a history with God? You and I have a history. Maybe sometimes we forget it. That's why I'm here to tell you, you must remember it. That's why I always tell people, you know, this is a culture of the house. Write things down. Amen. Write things down. Maybe in your notebook if you are old school. Or you can use iPad or you can use whatever. Write things down. Do a history. Look what the Lord has done. How God has blessed me. How God has transformed me. How God has moved in my family. How God brought me to this place. How God led me to a higher level. Amen. Write things down. Remember and begin to praise God because that will position your heart for more. Anyone, you know, ready to write things down? Amen. So remember, you have something to remember with. All right? Even within the times of, uh, of disappointments, in the times we're in, you didn't know what to do. Remember how God ministered to you. Maybe it's through a song or maybe through a brother or maybe through a sister. Remember how God led you. What were the instructions, the learnings? When fear was trying to come in, how were you able to overcome that fear? That is your history with God. And even in the pain, do you know, let me say this. We go through pains. We go through sorrow in this life, right? Amen. Do you, but do you know, listen to this. For those who are going through pains and even sorrow or loss of a loved one. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that you have something, you and I have something here on earth that we don't have in heaven? Do you know what that is? A sacrifice of praise. Your tears. Your pain. When the time we're in, you choose to again worship God. Because in heaven, everything is perfect. Here on earth, in heaven, you don't need the sacrifice of praise. Because faith is rewarded by sight. But here, on, here in this earth, there are pains, there are highs and are lows. But you know the most powerful thing that I know? is when in your lows, you looked up to heaven and begin to position your heart to believe, even though I don't see it, God, I will still believe it. That is precious in God. That's a sacrifice of praise. That is your history with God. Write things down. When you're willing to, when you're being pressed because of the circumstances that you are pressed to give up. There are times when you just want to give up and say, wait a minute. You know, I don't know what's going to happen, but you chose to praise God. You chose to bless God. You chose to go to church. Yeah, you, you, you can just stay home, right? You can just say, you know, I'm not going to church. I will, you know, I'm, I, I'm offended. You know, I'm offended. I don't want to go back to God. But you chose. There, there are people that are just going to go out and they're not going to mind God because... God offended them.
But you know what? For you, you chose and say, I am still going to believe. Regardless of I, I don't really see it. I don't even know why these things are happening, but I will continue to praise. I will continue to stand on, my, on God's word. You know, that is the most precious thing. That is your history and how God met you in that secret place. Write things down. Amen. Write things down wherein no one is around you but only the Spirit of God. You chose to stay in God's presence and believe. You chose to allow His Word to, to put peace in your heart when complexities and anxiousness and fear is troubling you. You know, fear is affecting your body. You chose to worship God, the most powerful thing. Amen? Most powerful thing. You can turn your disappointments. You can turn your pains into a fertilizer for the destiny, for the dreams of God to become reality. Amen? It, you can turn that. You can turn your, your pains, your, your sorrows into to joy and allowing God to move in your situation. So remember, you're be becoming aware of your history. When you're aware of your history, you have something to remember with. And then secondly, you have something to build on. Right? It becomes now a weapon in your next level of believing. Among you know that God has set wonderful things for us. Amen? But we need to believe it. Amen? I've, I've seen this in, in, and I've continued to see it. If you want to experience the move of God, if you want to see the, the blessings of God, if you want to see the promises of God, you must stretch. Amen? You must step, step out of the boat. You're not going to see what God has in store for you without a stretch. Let me say that again. You're not going to see what God has in store for you without a stretch. That's why faith is needed. That's why faith is needed. And you and I, God has given us a measure of faith. Pastor Mylene read in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. Faith, you know, faith is to believe in advance. Amen? To believe in advance. And you know what? You and I, God has given us a measure of faith. In the Amplified, it says, now. Everybody say now. Now you have faith. Now faith is the assurance, the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed. It's guaranteed already. We can camp in this verse for the whole day. Amen. Of things hoped for. Are you believing for something? Amen. What makes the difference? What, what causes us to really believe in, in the unseen, the supernatural, the provision of God, the supply of God. Faith. Amen. Faith in His Word. And how does faith come? By hearing and hearing God's Word. It's a simple, you know, the simple formula. You hear more of God's Word. You meditate on God's Word. You read God's Word. You, you allow God's Word to speak to you. Faith rises up within you. Amen. Faith rises up within you. Now, faith is the assurance, the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed. And the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Come on, everybody. Amen. We have something that is divine that was given to us, and that is faith, that measure of faith, faith in His Word. We're not... You know, both putting our trust in the Word of men, we're putting our trust in the Word of God. And, amen? And God and His Word, they are one. And so if God says you are healed, then believe that. Amen? That's your assurance. That's your title deed, your confirmation. Come on, everybody. I get excited. You know, Romans 10, 17, so faith comes from hearing. That is, hearing the good news about Christ. You want to build history with God? You need the Word. Amen. Allow God to speak to you. And you know what? History, building history with God, making history with God starts in the private. It's not in the public. Amen. It's when you're quiet time. It's when God speaks to you. You know, when God speaks to you, that's in the private. Do you know even right now you can have a private time with God? I've had instances wherein I was listening to a message. There was impartation even in this house, and God's speaking to me apart from what Pastor Paul is saying. 
There are times when Pastor Paul is saying something and I'm getting something for me. Amen. God speaks in different ways. Aren't you glad that God speaks to you and me? Amen. He speaks to us through a song. He even speaks to us through a Korean drama. Amen. Hallelujah. He speaks to us in many things, experiences. He speaks to us to trust in Him in this and that. And oh my gosh, our part is just to be open. Amen. He can use different people. He can use different scenarios. Amen. He speaks to us in partition. But as long as your heart is open, Lord God, I want to hear from you. As long as you are in that atmosphere of the Word, an atmosphere of the Spirit, that you are, your heart is open to the Spirit, whatever situation you are in, God can be able to speak to you. Amen. And so let me encourage you. Faith comes, 7, 10, 17. Faith comes from hearing. Our heart is to hear. Amen. Look at that. So faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. You take something here on a Sunday, you bring it out there, you meditate on it, you allow your, your heart to hear, all right? Throughout the day, throughout the week, you allow your heart to hear the good news of Christ. If it is not good news, you know, about Christ, then it's not God, all right? So if fear is trying to come in, then wait a minute, I'm not going to, to allow that to, to come into my, to my heart. But if it's a good news, and when fear is there, I'm going to overcome that with a good news about who I am, about His promises in my life. Come on, everybody. Amen. So when you hear faith, or rather when you hear the Word, God speaks to you. Faith rises up. Amen. Faith rises up. And this is a place where, in, like what I said in the private, that this is where God now begins to reveal things. God now begins to move in in your heart and even reveal dreams and desires. When we have dreams and desires, you know, I can see everybody here. I know I've seen in a way a little bit, kind of know what God has done in some of you. I see history right here. I see history right here. I see, oh my God, I get so excited. Why is it important that we build history? Because it is our worship to God. It's our worship to God. You know, one day, the day to come that we're going to face Jesus, face to face with Him. And what are we going to offer Him? Our history. Our history. That is going to be our worship to Him. Amen. And so, what happens in the private, He now begins to give you things that is close to His heart. Amen. This is now, He's going to reveal dreams and desires. Now God begins to download dreams and desires in your heart. We need to pay attention to our desires while we are enjoying the presence of God in prayer. That's why we ask people to pray, to be in the Spirit, to know the purpose and the, and the plans in, that God has. The Word of God needs to be alive in our hearts. Mark eleven twenty four 24, in the King James Version, I want you to see this. It says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, okay, because King James, you know, all right, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them, all right? But look at this. What things whatsoever you desire, when you pray, when you pray, things are going to be birthed in your heart. It's going to be, I it seems like it's going to be your desire, but it's actually God's desire being downloaded in your heart. That's why we must pay attention to those desires. We must pay attention to those dreams. All right? And so God downloads these things in the private. Right? So where does history start? In the private. You know, in the private, I remember God says, you know what, we open another church, uh, another service. All right, from, uh, from three services, you must open another service. So it starts in the private for us to see the supernatural where God is going to lead us. He reveals that to you in the private. And He downloads dreams. He, he gives to you His dreams, His desires. So we must pay attention to these things. Some people say, oh, maybe th this is just me. No, maybe that is God. 
Maybe that is God. All right? Something happens in your time, the time of communion with Him that brings life to our capacity to dream and desire. What happens is our minds become renewed through divine encounter that as we stay in His presence, be intimate with Him, you know, be aware of God in our lives, what happens is He now, His heart now becomes our hearts. I remember, I want to go to... to uh, an example, among you know that Solomon was the one who dedicated the temple, right? It was Solomon, but it was David the father who had a desire to build a temple for God. Remember that? All right, it was the temple built by Solomon, supplied by David, but it was the heart of David. He cannot build the temple because God said, you are a man of war. But where did David got the idea to build a temple for God? During those times, you know, the worship of God was centralized, all right? And it was in a tabernacle, all right? A tent, and it's a moving tent. But David, because he was a man after God's own heart, a man of his presence, he had an idea to build a temple. Now, look at this. 1 Kings 8, 15 to 17 in the ESV. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who with his hand has fulfilled what he promised with his mouth to David my father. This is Solomon saying, speaking. Since the day that I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all tribes of Israel in which to build a house that my name might be there. But I chose David to be over my people, Israel. Verse 17, Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. God did not choose a city to build a temple. He chose a man. And out of the desire of the man, birth forth, the building of a temple. What am I saying here? As you stay in the presence of God and allow His Word to minister to you and allow His, His, His life to just consume you, there will be desires that will be downloaded by God in your heart that it will be now your desire and now you now make a wonderful history because you stepped out in faith, prepare for it, believe for it, you know, and you now co-labor with God and you begin to see yourself and your life become an instrument of God in the process. Where do you get that? In the private place. David got that because he loves, so loved God that he wanted to build the best temple ever for God. But it came because of his encounter with God in the intimate place. Can you see this? There are things that are birthed in your heart that you think that, oh, this is just me. But maybe it is God. And God is positioning that dream and that desire because he wants to build history with you. One thing about the dreams and the desires of God, it is above you. It is beyond you. You need him in this. Amen. To impact the nation. Oh, that's a big dream. To make Jesus known, you know, all around the world. That is a big dream. Where does the purpose? You know, Pastor Paul has been speaking two weeks about purpose. Where do you get purpose? In the presence of God. You know, I pray in these last days that we get purpose. I pray for resurrection of dreams for some people here. You know what? When you, God gives you a dream, you live beyond yourself. You live beyond yourself. It is not just for you. All right? You now begin to have a purpose to live, to be excellent, you know, to, to strive for what God has in store for you because you want to bless people for His name. That is a dream. Of God. Come on, you have big dreams. Come on. All right? If you don't have big dreams, continue to come. Amen? And God is going to give you dreams that's going to affect not just your family. You know what's sad to say? Many people out there just dream for their family. They just dream for themselves. And nothing bad about that. That is so good. You know, dream for your family. But there are times when, when you stay in the presence of God, you don't just dream for your family. You begin to dream for the family of God. 
You begin to dream for God, you know, His dream. You now dream with God. And this is where history is built. You see people in the Bible throughout, you know, the, you know they, they dream the dream of God and they walk in their destiny. Do you want to walk in your destiny? Everybody, people in the balcony, so close to heaven. Amen. Do you want to walk in your destiny? Dream with God. Let's dream with God. Amen. What are the dreams that God has birthed in your heart? What are the dreams that you have forgotten? What are the things that God has downloaded in the past, but now because of certain things, because of age, because of limitation, because of visa? <laughs> All right, because I'm a Filipino. You know, because of this, because of this, because of this, because of that. No. Who, who gave you that dream? Let me ask you a question. Who gave you that dream? Amen. Where is that dream birth? It was birth in the presence of God. And so God is now dreaming with you. Come on, think about that. Oh my God. God is dreaming with me? I am co-dreaming with God. I'm dreaming with God. So the possibility is endless, right? That's why we are standing on, you know, Ephesians 3.20. More than you can ask, dream, or imagine. Amen. Where, whatever you are believing for, we're believing for what God, what you could ask, what we could ask, there's more. More that we could ask, dream, or imagine. So what are your dreams? Resurrect those dreams. In Jesus' name, I speak that. A resurrection of dreams. Pastor, this, this dream has been in my heart for quite some time. But yeah, continue to dream. Allow the Word of God to clean and to, to what, what do you call that? Uh, fix that dream. Amen. Because of other things that have happened in your life. Maybe you lost the passion for that dream. I pray that you will find it in Jesus' name as you find it in His presence. Amen. Why is it important that we have faith? Because look at this, Romans 4, 16. The dream, the destiny, the plans, the purposes that God has for us, they are all there given by grace. Amen. Grace. The beautiful plan Plans to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us hope in the future. It's all given by grace. Aren't you glad? Amen. What do you do with the gift of grace? Amen. You cannot earn it. You cannot strive for it. What do you do? It Believe for it. Receive it. And look, as we were believing for our trip, you know, this trip that we did, all right? You know, I was asking the Lord, Lord God, give, me, give us a word. Praise God for His word. Mylene was standing on the Word of God. I was standing, you know, in the Word of God. In every step, I inquire of the Lord with regards to this, this trip, okay? And this is one of the verses that God spoke to me with regards to this visa. You know, there are visas. We need to, to believe for our visas. You know, that is a privilege of every Filipino, right? Amen. If you want to go to other countries, all right, you, this is a privilege that we apply for visas. For other <laughs> citizens, they don't apply. Amen. All right? But Ro Romans 4.16, we're believing for visas. We're believing for two. All right? And verse 16, this, I w God spoke to me, and this was my anchor as we were believing. You know, the week prior for us to leave, there were no visas. The week prior. And so the, the Medway Church, New Life Medway Church, they've been believing. They've been praying for us interceding for us because we need a UK visa, all right? And when we applied, little did we know, when we applied, we thought that it's going to take how many days? 15 days, all right? When we applied, they said it's going to be six weeks. So when we counted, it was right just the week before we're going to leave. Again, this is a two-year uh, um, in the making trip because we got the tickets pre-pandemic. And so we needed to rebook and rebook. And so to make the long story short, the week before we leave, there were no visas. We were believing, we were praying, all right? And so I, God gave me this word, Romans 4, 16. He said, therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith. Wow. 
inheriting the promise depends entirely on what? What is faith? You're believing. All right? That is, what is that? Confident trust. Everybody say trust. The whole point of this message is today that I will encourage you to renew your trust. That you will renew your trust in God. Whenever you don't see it, that you continue to renew your trust in God. Because trust is the key for us to see the expected end. Amen? So it is the key. Amen? Trust is needed in the waiting. Among you know, our, you're in the waiting. All of us, may, maybe all of us are in the waiting, right? In the waiting for something. What is the key there is to continue to trust. Trust in God. Trust in His Word. Amen? And begin to, to ask for instructions. Amen? In the waiting. And we trust because we know all things will work together for good. Amen? All things will work together for good. So, trust. It's a confident trust. So, the promise depends entirely on faith. That is confident trust in the unseen God in order that it may be given as an act of grace is unmerited favor and mercy. That spoke to me. That spoke to me. You know, in another translation, it says the promise depends on faith so that it can be experienced as a grace gift. So it is a gift. God, this is a gift given to, to me by you. I know this healing is given to me by you. But how will I receive that? How will I see the manifestation of that healing, of that grace gift? By faith. And what is faith? Confident trust. Confident trust. I will trust even though I don't see it. I will trust even though I don't have the visa. You know, we were booking things without the visa. All right? Booking whatever we need to book without the visa, knowing we were packing already without the visa. All right? We, we were confident trust that we are, they are setting up their ordination without us having a visa. The catering, the high tea, and the scones, and you know what? If you want fish and chips, go to New Life Medway. The best fish and chips ever. All right? I'm hungry to Louis. <laughs> but come on, everybody. Do you now begin to move? Begin to trust in God. That is confident trust. What do you do in the waiting? You know, with the time that I have, let me give you an acronym. Okay? P L A N. Plan. Plan towards this. All right? So what do you do in the waiting as you are trusting? Letter P, pray it out. Just continue to pray it out. Amen. God gave you a word, pray it out. All right? Pray it out. Continue to pray. And then what's next? L is lay it out. Lay it out. Begin to meditate. Keep it before you. As you pray it out, you lay it out. Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3 in the ESV. And the Lord answered me, write the vision and make it plain on tablets. You know what I was doing? Wala pang visa. I was watching YouTube of the places that we're going to go to. Really. I was going, oh, this is going to be nice. Are we going to be here without the visa? But you know what? I'm watching YouTube. So when I got there, I said, wow, look, I saw this in YouTube. Now I'm here. No, really. You know, I even scanned. I, I even watched, you know, this guy playing in a, uh, in a uh, train station. In a train station in London. He's popular. He's very good. So I even scanned and I watched. And you know what? When we were in the train station, I saw the guy. And so I was like, wow. You know, I was just watching you in YouTube. Now I see you. Amazing, right? So I was watching and just believing and all. Lay it out. Lay it before you. Write the vision. Make it plain so we may run who reads it. And still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end and it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. Everybody say, wait for it. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, wait for it. 
<laughs> Wait for it. Do you know that's part of making history? What happens in the waiting? Ano nangyayari in the waiting? When you're waiting, that's your history. Am I going to be, you know, believing? There are two choices. You're going to succumb to the pressure and give up and lose your dream. All right? Or I'm going to go all out. I'm going to believe because God, you said it. And see your dream come into a reality. Amen? So what do you do in the waiting? That's part of your history. That's part of your history. So lay it out. Because if it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. Amen? Where's that verse? Put it there. Habakkuk 2. Amen? If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. Who said that? It's God. It will surely come. It will not delay. For some people, they think that the delay is a denial. But I was saying, maybe. No, in God, there's no de delay. It, in God, there's always perfect timing. We plan to leave pre-pandemic. All right? We plan to leave. But God delayed it two years after we had the best time. Because New Life Medway will not uh, operate pre-pandemic. It's, it's not yet set. It was not New Life then. But what a wonderful to meet the people from New Life Medway. Amazing. You know what? Amazing what the Lord has done. There was even a healing that happened when we were there. You know, a person who had a hip problem uh, scheduled for surgery. We, we didn't even lay hands on that guy. We were just worshiping, preaching the word. And then he approached Mark and he was crying and he said, I got healed. I feel I got healed because I can move my hip already. I'm on. You think it's a delay? But no, it's not a delay. God is saying, I am just setting you up. I'm just setting you up. All things work together for good, right? Amen. So what do you do? You, plan, you pray for it. You continue to lay it out. Letter A, you act on it. Start moving in that direction. Move towards it. Amen. Begin to prepare things out. Amen. Begin to declare things out. Plan, uh, act on it. Start moving. And then N, navigate. Navigate it out. Be open to change. All right? Be open to hold things loosely. Allowing that all things work together for good. Amen? Hold things loosely. Because at the end of the day, kanina nang galing yung, yung dream na yun. At the end of the day, it came from God, right? So God, more than you, wants to give that to you. I remember, I, we just wanted to bless our children because this is like Kevin's graduation from college and then Hi Kyla's graduation from from uh, senior high, and then Kyla's valedictorian, and then valedictorian siya, and then um, 18th debut, so rolled into one. And so we really wanted this trip for them. But I said, God, no, when we were waiting for a lot of things, all the more, if this is the heart of an imperfect father, how much more you? Amen? So this is for all areas, right? Not just for a trip. Amen? And so... Begin to believe in that and allow God to speak to you and nurture that, your heart. You know, navigate it, hold things loosely and allow God to say, you know, all things will work together. Romans 8, 26 to 28 in the New Living Translation. This is what we're singing a while ago. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness, the ability to produce results. That is weakness there, the inability to produce results. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Right? And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. You know what speaks to me, what's wonderful in this verse? Is that when we are limited, the Holy Spirit continues to pray for us. Do you know that the Holy Spirit is praying for you right now? That you don't give up? The Holy Spirit is praying for us right now that you continue to move forward. 
to resurrect that dream, to allow God to speak to you. There is, I believe, uh, God wants to revive something in the hearts of the people here at New Life. I pray as we go higher that it's going to be a higher way of believing. That we want to see things be, even before the end of the year for each and every one of us to see the history of God unfold in our lives. Amen? So the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. So the Spirit of God is praying. We are in that atmosphere, in the private place, in that secret place, in that intimate place of just learning and hearing from God, inquiring of the Lord in every step. And maybe there are times wherein we miss it or not, but still we're in that place. Amen. It's a journey. We pray our hearts are open. Our hearts are connected to the Spirit. Okay, this is what this, these verses are saying. And it says here in verse 28, before that, and for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And then verse 28 comes into process. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. Remember the two weeks of living with purpose of Pastor Paul, right? We are called. Where do you get purpose? In His presence, right? Amen? Where do you find, you know, and understand the love of God? In His presence. And so all things will work together for our good. Amen? And so when we were you know, believing for this trip, and we were believing for many things, we said, Lord, all things will work together for our good. Even in the delays, there were delayed luggages for us, there were a lot of things happening, but all things will work together for good. Amen? All things will work together for good. And so, that's what we've been saying a while ago. And I want you to hear this. I want you to be encouraged by this. All things will work together for good. Because my heart is, Lord, I inquired of you. I inquired of you. I love that part, that song. When trouble comes and nights are filled with tears, I will fix my eyes upon the one whose perfect love has con conquered every fear. Hold me in your everlasting arms. You are working all things for my good. You are working all things for my good. And even though I cannot see it, you are working all things for my good. Psalm 107 verse 43. It says here, those who are wise will take all this to heart. They will see in our history the faithful love of the Lord. Anyone wise in this place? We bring this to heart. Amen? We bring this to heart. And then... We don't use this, uh, this is a commentary in the Message Bible, but I want to focus, just read this so that it's wonderfully said here. Isaiah 46, verse 9 to 10. Can I, I ask everyone to stand up, please? We're going to pray. And I say, Isaiah 46, 9 to 10 in the Message. It says, remember your history, your long and rich history. I am God, the only God you've had or ever will have, incomparable, irreplaceable, from the very beginning telling you what the ending will be, all along letting you in on what is going to happen, assuring you I'm in this for the long haul. I'll do exactly what I set out to do. Amen? Come on, let's thank God for that. That's an assurance. That's an assurance. That's an assurance. Put your hand in your heart. Wonderful history I can see. Amen. Here in this place. Oh, what a journey. What a journey. You know what? I believe when we get to heaven, maybe that's one, one of the things that we're going to do. We're going to sit down, of course, with Jesus. But we're going to sit down with one another and say, tell me about your journey. Tell me, tell me about your journey. Amazing what the Lord has done in your life, right? Well, you know what? We don't need to wait, you know, until that time. We can start right now in our life groups, in our fellowship, right? We can have that, definitely. Encourage one another in our journeys 
as we build history with God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, as we put our hand in our hearts. I pray for renewed trust, a renewed trust, a renewed trust in you in whatever season of life we are in today, that we will have confident trust, that we will know without a shadow of the doubt that you are working for us, that you are working for our good, that you love us and you have a plan and a destiny, that we have this privilege, Lord, of dreaming with you, that we can see that dream come to pass in our lifetime. I pray, Father God, that you continue, Lord God, to resurrect that dream. I speak a resurrection of dreams. I speak of a word that will, will rise up and faith will come, that will focus on things that is even in the natural impossible, but we're going to focus on that, on, on your word and stand on that. I pray for the trust, Lord God, to rise up as the word is preached and the word is received. I thank you for wonderful histories in this place. I thank you, Lord God, that you are not done with us yet, that you are still building wonderful, glorious history that at the end of the day, even generations are going to be blessed by the legacy of the life of the people who dream with God. I speak to you dreamers, dreamers of God. Continue, continue to believe. Continue to step out. Sometimes it's a stretch. Sometimes it is uncomfortable. But believe, do not give up. Move forward. Move forward. You have His Word. You have His presence. Believe and see that dream, that desire. Be a praise and a glory for Him and Him alone. Amen? We receive that by faith in Jesus' name. And everybody will say amen and amen, amen. Come on, let's give Him praise. Come on, let's thank Him. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord, for what you're speaking. Amen, amen. You may be seated. I think we have a video. After that, we're going to go back and, uh, and end the service. Let's watch this. This is for our ministry focus. A ministry that we want to focus this week. Church is for everybody. And the love of God is for all ages. So you know, here in New Life, we believe that even for the big kids, seven to nine years old, should experience and know and discover more about of the marvelous love of God. This is Wonder League. We have our services in room 2A every Sunday, 9 a.m., 11.30 a.m., 3 p.m., and 5.30 p.m. service. Bring them here so that they can experience God's love in such a cool and fun way. This is where all of us together wonder in the marvelous and beauty of God's love. Transition time can really be hard, especially from one main season to another. Well, in this age group, especially with their growth spurt, many things can really happen, but we guide them through finding their true identity in Christ Jesus. Welcome to Generation Uprising. This is for ages 10 to 12 years old. So join us during our Sunday services, 9 a.m., 11.30 a.m., and 3 p.m. in Room 3C.
Next Steps presents Bringing Heaven to Our Home, our very first family summit. Join us on September 2, Friday from 7 to 9 p.m. and September 3, Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the main sanctuary as we celebrate, encourage, and strengthen our homes. We have an amazing array of speakers lined up. Pastors Paul and Shadi Chase, Pastors Giselle and Mylene Evangelista, Pastor Joey and Ut Raphael, as well as Pastor Gam and Baby Lihauko. For more details, please stop by the Next Steps table after the service. Together, we go higher as a church, and together, we continue to make Jesus known. See you online or on site. And we sing as we end this. of new life that they will truly see that all things work together for their good and that they will obtain a good testimony i thank you that this week that i stand on the word of god as they stand in faith that they will continue to dream with god i thank you for the spirit of encouragement the spirit of a boldness and even the spirit of courage to once again dream so i pray for your week to be a week of the manifestation of the promises of God, the fulfillment of dreams and the resurrection of all that you have been believing for. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you, and we will see you again next week.